So normally people take for granted, if you need energy, you need uh, nutrients for your body to keep functioning. You just eat and that's it. People that suffer from type 1 diabetes actually can't take this for granted. Um, the cells in the pancreas, more specifically the beta cells, produce a hormone called insulin that allows the rest of the cells in your body to obtain the nutrients from the food you're eating and use it as energy. In the case of people with type 1 diabetes, these cells are being destroyed. The worst part of it is that they're being destroyed by the immune system. The immune system is that part that's supposed to be protecting you from getting sick, it's actually attacking you and making you sick. The, the cells that end up going to your pancreas and attacking the beta cells are called our reactive T cells. And before they actually go and attack, they have to travel through an, orga, through an organ called the lymph node. The lymph node has a really standard structure and uh, inside it there's a group of cells that form this network or reticulum called fibroblastic reticular cells. It has been shown that these cells are affected not only in type 1 diabetes, but other autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis. The issue with studying these cells is, specifically in type 1 diabetes, we can just take the pancreatic lymph node and study it without altering the cells a lot. My question, the question that I ask myself is, can we mimic this structure to have a more relevant way of studying these cells in vitro? The way I'm trying to do this is by isolating these cells. So I take the lymph nodes from both, let's say, healthy and diabetic or diseased mice. I get rid of all the rest of the cells, and I only have the cells that form this reticulum, called the fibroblastic reticular cells. And developing my own collagen scaffolds, for example, a collagen sponge, I can mimic this sort of uh, reticulum or network, and sitting these cells on top of this, we can create a tool to study how these cells behave, how they interact with our reactive T cells, so we're basically developing a tool, or a library of tools, because by uh, modifying the collagen uh, scaffold, we can have different pore size and different structures. We develop a tool to study fibroblastic reticular cells, not only in diabetes, but also other autoimmune diseases. And in the end, this tool can not, it doesn't have to be used only by biomedical engineers, but also immunologists and clinical doctors.